Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to cover Herder's inequality and as a consequence Cauchy-Schwarz's inequality. Herder's inequality Herder's inequality says the following so actually, uh, it's going to be a little bit strange because it starts with the following assumption. Let P and Q be numbers, real numbers, larger than 1. And for the first time, we're going to have a slightly different, uh, well, a very different, actually, uh, correspondence between P and Q. I'm going to assume here that 1 over P plus 1 over Q is 1. So instead of what we had before, we're now having 1 over p plus 1 over q summed up equals to 1. Let's assume that we have two random variables, x and y, and so the p's absolute moment of x is finite, and the q's absolute moment of y is finite. So again, the notation, reminding everybody, is that I'm taking the mod of y, then the q's power, and then the expectation. So assume that the p's moment of x and the q's moment of uh, y are both finite. Then the statement of this theorem is that the expectation of the product, in fact, I can even add the mod around the product, expectation of the mod of the product is bounded by the 1 over p power of the p's moment of x, absolute moment, multiplied by the 1 over q power of the q's absolute moment of y. And this is true for any p and q such that 1 over p plus 1 over q is 1, pq uh, at least 1, and any random variables x and y. Notice the following, the following special case. If p equals q equals 2, then 1 over p is 1 half, 1 over q is 1 half, they do add up to 1. So this example is actually covered in Herder's inequality. And then the statement becomes that the expectation of product is bounded from above by the square root of the second moment of x and the square root of the second moment of y. This is called Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And this might be familiar from linear algebra, actually. A very similar inequality is true for vectors. Random variables can be considered as some kind of vectors, and in fact, these kind of combinations can be considered as some kind of norms. For example, the square root of the second moment is like a length, like a second norm. Okay, so Cauchy-Schwarz is a consequence of uh, Herder. Let's prove this. The proof is uh, pretty interesting. The proof is actually, at least the proof I show you, is actually a consequence of the concavity of the log function. So the log function is concave. Log function is concave. What does that mean? So let me just make a little plot of the log function, natural log. Here is x, and I'm, this is x equals to 1. Let's make a plot of the natural log function. It's something like that. And let's add a number x here. In fact, I'm going to add x, yes, x and y. So this is going to be log of x, and this is going to be somewhere here, log of y. And now if I draw the straight line in between these two points, and I'm going to look at a combination, a linear combination of x and y, convex combination of x and y, namely 1 over p times x and 1 over q times y, which is this point here. Okay, it's something like here. 
For example, if p is uh, if one over p is two thirds, so p is three half, and one over q is one third, so q is three, then this point could be somewhere around here. And what you can read off from this picture is the following fact, following a consequence of the concavity of log. If I take the log at this point, so log of 1 over px plus 1 over qy, again 1 over p and 1 over q are two positive numbers that add up to 1, so this is a convex combination. The value of the log is above the same convex combination of the values of the logs of x and logs of y. So this is larger than or equal to 1 over p log of x plus 1 over q log of y. Okay? Everybody can convince themselves that this linear combination, this convex combination of the values of log x and log y will exactly be on this line. And as you see from the picture, the log of the convex combination is larger than or equal than the convex combination of the logs. That's the consequence, that's a consequence of the concavity of the log function. Okay, now how can I make use of this uh, observation, of this simple calculus observation? Here's what I can do with this. So, take an exponential on this inequality. Take an exponential on this inequality. Okay. Log is the inverse of exponential. So if I take an exponential, if I take an exponential of log, if I take an exponential of log of 1 over px plus 1 over qy, that will be larger than or equal than exponential of 1 over p log x plus 1 over q log y. All I did here is I was looking at this previous inequality here and took an exponential, so exponential on the left hand side and exponential on the right hand side are there. Now log and exponentials are inverses to each other of course and just as an important remark, why is the inequality still true? Because the exponential function is a non-decreasing function. So at this point, whenever you take functions of inequalities, it's important to notice the monotone properties of your function. Exponential is a monotone increasing function, and therefore the inequality stays. Now e and log cancel, and I have 1 over px plus 1 over qy on the left-hand side. What happens on the right-hand side? Well, I'm looking at e to log x, which is x, and that's raised to the 1 over p power. This plus becomes a product, and then here I'm looking at e to the log y, which is y, and that is taken on the 1 over q power. So my inequality, my convexity or concavity inequality for log, actually takes this form, and all I have to do now is pick some particular values for these real numbers x and y. Actually, I'm going to make them random, and I'm going to look at the piece moment of my random variable x, uh, sorry, the piece power of my random variable x, divided by the piece moment of my random variable x, so expectation of the piece power, and <coughs> that's gonna be little x, and for little y, I'm going to do the same for y, and the q's power, so q's moment of y, q's power of y divided by the q's moment of y, absolute moment of y, so mod y to the q power under the expectation, okay? And that will give me an inequality. Let me just copy what happens then. 1 over p and then mod of x to the p over e of mod x to the p plus 1 over q y to the q over e y to the q. That's my left hand side, it's bounding from above the product of these quantities to the 1 over p power. 
So what happens when I take 1 over p power of this uh, fraction? It's going to give me x to the first power, y to the first power, when I take y to the q to the 1 over q. It is going to be divided by expectation of x to the p, and then don't forget that I have a 1 over p power around it, and expectation of y to the q, again I have a 1 over q power around it. That's my right hand side. And now the last step to do is take an expectation on this inequality. The two sides are random variables. I can take an expectation on this inequality. And then the expectation of the left hand side will be larger and equal than the expectation of the right hand side. However, what happens if I take an expectation of the left, left hand side? Let me do this in yellow. What happens if I add an expectation here? If I add an expectation here, then I have e of the uh, piece power of x divided by e of the piece power of x. This thing becomes 1. Same thing for y, expectation of the q power divided by expectation of the q power, this ratio becomes 1. So on the left hand side, I have 1 over p plus 1 over q, which is again 1. So my whole left hand side is 1. And it's still bounding my right hand side. So what happens if I add an expectation on the right hand side? The only random variable is the product of x and y under the mod. So that gets an expectation on it. Expectation of this product divided by these non-random bits. So there are these non-random numbers. If I add an expectation on these non-random numbers, that doesn't change anything. So I just copy whatever I had before. E of mod y to the q, 1 over q. And if you look at the left hand side of my inequality and the right hand side of my inequality, that proves the statement. That gives me back exactly what I started with, namely E of xy which is of course the same as e of uh, x mod y mod, that's the same as e of x y mod, smaller than or equal to the denominator, e of x to the p power, 1 over p, <coughs> e of uh, y to the q power to the 1 over q, that's my denominator, and that's the end of the proof.